One way to start would be to try to isolate x by taking the square root of both sides. Now we're already sort of running into trouble because we should probably use a plus or a minus if we're taking an even root, but just to make our answer simple, let's just look at the positive root right now. Since our equation is x equals the square root of 1 half to the x, we know what x is, and we can place x in for x on the right hand side. And we could do that again, and again, forever and ever, building this infinite iterated tower. And so, in some sense, just by maneuvering things around, we've isolated x. We've solved for what we're looking for. But maybe this isn't terribly satisfying. I mean, I don't really know what this number is. Not to mention we totally ignored that plus or minus square root business from before. Here's another approach. Multiply both sides by 2 to the x and insert an e to the ln. Why are we doing this? Well, we can take advantage of those properties of logarithms. We can drop the exponent of x down in front of the logarithm. And we're trying to rewrite this to use the Lambert function. If you haven't heard of it, we often call this function w, and it's the inverse function to x e to the x. If we want to use it to solve, we need to write the left-hand side of our equation in the form of x e to the x. However, it won't be x's, it'll be some expression e to the power of that expression. To get a little closer, let's take the square root of both sides using properties of exponents, and here we will indeed say that the square root of 1 is plus or minus 1. This will allow us to get our full range of answers. We're getting very close. The only difference between the form that we're looking for, x e to the x, and what we have is this ln 2 over 2. Otherwise, we have that. So let's just multiply both sides of our equation by ln 2 over 2. Now the left-hand side of our equation is in the form we're looking for, x e to the x. It's just not x, it's x ln 2 over 2, e to the x ln 2 over 2. Why is this nice? Because now we can apply w to both sides. Remember, w is the inverse function to x e to the x. And so applying it to x e to the x just spits out x, or in this case, x ln 2 over 2. Our equation is x ln 2 over 2 equals w of plus or minus ln 2 over 2. We can isolate x simply by multiplying by 2 and dividing by natural log 2. This will give us our full range of answers. There's a fairly nice series representation for w. All we have to do is plug in natural log 2 over 2, also minus natural log 2 over 2, and we get these two answers. There is a slight caveat to this in that x e to the x isn't 1 to 1 on its entire domain. So for certain values we substitute into w, and minus ln 2 over 2 happens to be one of those, we also get an additional output from what's called the lower branch, and we have three different answers. But to understand more about what's going on with this w Lambert function, click the video on the screen to see a really nice application of it. I'll see you in that one.